the Michigan State Capitol Commission and ask the secretary to please call the roll. Chair Randall? Here. Vice Chair Truscott? Here. Ms. Bauer? Here. Mr. Candler? Here. Ms. O'Brien? Here. A quorum is present. Um, would like to point out that for the public comment portion um, of this meeting, members of the public can address uh, their concerns and comments to MSCC at legislature.mi.gov. <clears throat> Once again, that's MSCC at legislature.mi.gov. Uh, <clears throat> I think because Valerie is non-contaminated, I'm going to take the mask off. Uh, at our last commission meeting, uh, we talked to great length about uh, how we should approach firearms in the Capitol and on Capitol Square. We've received a, an opinion from the Attorney General and an opinion from our legal counsel, uh, in-house legal counsel, Amy Shaw. And at the conclusion of Amy's comments, uh, she suggested that we might want to seek outside counsel to get a clearer picture of actually what our authority is as a commission. <clears throat> so we decided to do exactly that. Uh, the Attorney General's opinion notwithstanding, we felt that we needed to further clarify really what kind of authority the commission had and <clears throat> also look at um, the ancillary implications if we were to ban firearms. <clears throat> if we do ban firearms, we probably are looking at the necessity of having magnetometers. Uh, what would the cost be to install magnetometers? What would the additional personnel costs be uh, if we were to install magnetometers. So it's not a, just a simple, do we ban firearms? It's do we ban firearms and at what cost? So with a lot of that background in mind, we decided to seek outside counsel. I asked Bill Candler and John Truscott if they would vet the name of several firms and individual attorneys that had come our way. Uh, they graciously agreed to do that. So I would like to ask, uh, starting out with Bill Candler, if Bill would bring us up to speed on what the recommendation uh, to this special committee is. Bill. Sure, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, yeah, after your uh, request that we do some vetting, I, I didn't talk to John at all. I, I, I don't know what John did, he can tell you that. On my own, I, I did quite a bit of vetting, talked to a lot of people, considered several names. I mean, I, I wanted to, I know that the, the commission has some concerns about you know, the, the scope and limitations of our power. And everybody's kind of surprised actually that, that the attorney general came out with this uh, opinion, given telling us that we had that authority. So we're trying to get our arms around it. So I wanted to find somebody that I was comfortable with and I thought that everybody could be comfortable with. And it did a lot of checking and, and looking around and it came up with the name of uh, Gary Gordon. Um, John and I actually, after um, I talked to the chairman about it, and apparently John and the chairman talked, I think we got on a call with uh, Gordon, uh, John and I did. And uh, we qu quizzed him quite a bit about his approach to it. And I, I'm comfortable that it would be a nonpartisan, straightforward approach. I told him we're not looking for legal advice. I'm sorry, not looking for political advice, we're just looking for legal advice. Is there anything missing in that opinion that we should we should know about? Um, other implications that we should be thinking about? Um, I also asked him to be very you know, careful not to be influenced by any political actors in this town. And I asked him that if you were, if you were approached by anybody from either side you know, of the political spectrum in Lansing, Democratic or Republican side, that he would immediately contact the chairman and let him know. I said, even if I do, um, please let him know. We, we want this to be straight up and down kind of second look at uh, what the attorney general's opinion said and just make sure we're not missing anything uh, from what, was, what we saw in the opinion. 
And I feel very comfortable with what the response we got from uh, Gary Gordon, and I'm 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 very supportive of his uh, uh, be retaining him to be our counsel on, on this one issue, just on this particular issue. Thank you, Bill. John, do you have anything to offer? Yeah, I'll I'll add that. Uh, Bill and I had conversations immediately after our last meeting with the Attorney General's office. Uh, they made folks available right away uh, to go through the opinion to ask our, answer our questions. So I was really pleased with how quickly uh, the Attorney General's office responded. We still did have some questions uh, after that. Um, there were some things in the opinion that I think were um, kind of extraneous to, to what we're looking at in a very limited scope. And uh, that's one thing that really struck me with the way Gary explained it is that He's going to take an approach like he's never seen this issue. Um, he's never dealt with it or read anything and just look at it very strictly and construct a, a very straightforward response for us. So I think um, he's a guy who's got a great reputation around town, um, very uh, nonpartisan. Uh, so I'm very pleased with, with what I heard from him and confident that he'll do a great job. Very good. Well, <clears throat> I think every member of the commission received the engagement letter from Mr. Gordon. So before the special committee, I would like to place that engagement letter and ask for any discussion. And uh, then if it is the pleasure of the committee, uh, a motion to move forward to the full commission later this afternoon, a recommendation that the engagement letter be approved and that we move forward. Um, a bit unusual, normally I'd ask for a motion and then discussion on the motion, but I am going to ask any member of the commission before we get to a motion if they would like to ask questions uh, about the whole procedure. Any member of the commission wish to speak at this time? Joan has her hand up. Yes, Commissioner Bauer. Uh, thank you, Chair Randall. Um, is, would this be the time to, before before the motion, to state my opinion? I mean, is sure, sure, sure. Okay. If you if this um, this is a yes. general discussion, we will have a motion to. Uh, move forward with the engagement letter, but I thought if there was any other issue surrounding this whole issue that we're dealing with, I wanted to have an opportunity for members to okay. to speak. So please do. Okay, I, you know, some of, I'll try to make this brief. Some of my comments are going to sound pretty familiar because they're the same comments I made at our May 11th commission meeting because my opinion on this issue has not changed. And I hope I made it very clear that I felt then, and I still feel that the Michigan Capital Commission has the authority to ensure the safety of the public, as well as those who carry out the work of the people by prohibiting firearms. We have a legal opinion from the Attorney General that she sent May 11th before our meeting uh, that the commission has the authority to restrict firearms in the Capitol. And she is the top legal official in the state of Michigan, the top law enforcement official, duly elected by the people of Michigan. And I do not see, uh, I don't see that we need a second legal opinion. And I guess my, it, my, my concern is, so we get a second legal opinion. Um, what if we, what if members on the commission don't like that legal opinion? Are we going to go and find a legal opinion that supports what people would like to have happen? Um, and how, how is the advice of an outside attorney? And actually he, you know, uh, I realized Gary worked for the attorney general's office for many, many years. So he certainly, um, you know, understands the issues, but why is that better than the legal opinion from our attorney general? So I just feel, I mean, I, I have great concerns over getting another opinion. The concern is where, where is that going to lead us? You know, people rightfully get 
frustrated with government when they perceive that we form committees to put off having to make decisions. We shop around for legal opinions that we can use to rationalize our decisions and that we're afraid to make the tough decisions. And I think they feel we have no common sense. I can't count the number of people of all political persuasions who've been shocked and outraged when they recently realized that firearms are allowed in the Capitol. Their response is it makes no sense. So I think we need to do the common sense thing. I don't support hiring an attorney to give us another legal opinion. Yes, I think we need to talk with the AG's office, the state police, uh, the leadership of the House and Senate to move forward with a policy uh, if we agree that we have the authority. But secondly, I would hope that we agree that it is our authority and it is our responsibility to act and, and do something. Um, so that's, you know, that's my position. And I would just like some response. What are we going to do with the information that we get back? What, then we have two opinions and are, are we going to pick one? Um, we have the opinion of the highest uh, elected official in the state of Michigan. Not the high, in, in terms of enforcing uh, the sure. law. Sure. Uh, Commissioner Bauer, I, I appreciate your comments. I would like to respond to two things. Number one, your concern that we were in the game of opinion shopping, that we would shop for opinions until we got one that we liked. Um, I, I would like to dispel that only from my own personal perspective. I don't see that as what we're about. I think we're seeking a, an opinion from an outside legal counsel because our internal counsel had an opinion that was different than the AG's. And I don't mean to diminish or demean in any respect the Attorney General. I, I respect her opinion, but I think we're looking at something here that is truly unique in the sense that she is suggesting that this commission, and I stress commission, is vested with a lot of power that I'm not sure a majority of the members on this commission think we have. Uh, that's number one. In number two, the opinion that we get from Mr. Gordon by no means is going to bind any member of the commission to vote in a particular way. Individual commission members, after we get his opinion, will certainly be free to vote their conscience and what they think is proper. Uh, again, Joan, I, I truly respect your position and I think you made your position very clear. Any other member of the commission wish to speak? Commissioner Truscott. Yeah, um, just to maybe address some of Joan's uh, issues or concerns. One of the reasons I want another opinion is uh, one of the assistant attorney generals that uh, Bill and I talked to told us or admitted, he, he stated I think what we all know, this case would go to the US Supreme Court. And if we're going to be tasked with making a decision that's going to be in that kind of litigation, that's gonna be dragged out for that many years and go all the way to the US Supreme Court, I wanna make sure we have all the best opinions possible. Um, and also, what happens if we get several years down the road and there's a new attorney general who doesn't wanna represent us or take this case forward? So I think these are all dynamics that we just have to be prepared for because it's a reality that we'll be facing um, with certain decisions. So I just, I, I want to know as broadly as possible what all the ramifications are. And maybe I can just, Mr. Sharon, can I add something yes, also? Bill, Bill Campbell. Yeah, again, I, I respect uh, Commissioner Bauer's concerns also. We've discussed them before and, and I, I totally understand them. Um, my involvement, and it certainly was not to delay anything, but I know that there are members of the commission that are not totally comfortable um, with it. Remember, we, we've known about this for what, about four weeks that we have this, this uh, power according to the Attorney General's opinion. Um, the fact that we haven't acted yet, the legislature's had this authority to act and they haven't acted for decades. So I, I don't think it's a problem that would take us a couple of weeks is really a big issue. Um, I, I, for one, 
I don't think there's anybody in this commission that thinks people should be running around the Capitol with guns. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about now, you know, a newly found uh, authority from the attorney general's opinion, um, which was kind of was a surprise to me at first. I was really confused by it. I, I just really thought, how can we amend law? I read the opinion. I understand the attorney general's opinion. I respect it now better. But I know some members of this commission are not comfortable yet. And my thought was just, you know, we've been working together uh, in a very um, high level camaraderie. We make our decisions regarding capital preservation, historical uh, research, et cetera. I want us to continue to work that way. And out of respect to the members of the commission that just weren't totally comfortable, I just thought it was a good idea to, to do this and make everybody kind of like have a chance to take a breath, consider all the options and look at it and move forward. Um, process isn't always uh, a stall. And I certainly, in my case, that's not what intended. I want to do a good job of this. And I think all of us do. And that's, that's the reason why I'm comfortable with making this decision to hire legal counsel. And we got an answer also, by the way, uh, from uh, Mr. Gordon, that within a week to two weeks, you could have this completed. So it won't be a long stall of any kind. Thanks. Any other commissioner have comments? Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner um, O'Brien. I appreciate the fact that the attorney being proposed wishes to take a very um, open and broad-based perspective. It's my hope, I don't wanna direct him to do it, but it's my hope that he'll also look at that some of the spaces are not under the control of the Capitol Commission. One of my concerns remains um, that it will not serve anyone well if different spaces under the control of different entities within the building have different rules. So I'm, I'm hoping that, the, that whatever he finds in legal opinion, law, constitution, whatever it might be, I'm hoping there's a way that we can offer consistency regardless of the policy. That, that does remain to be one of my biggest concerns is having one policy for a hallway and another policy for the chambers. Commissioner O'Brien, I think you make a very valid point. If we were to ban weapons, in addition to the things I mentioned, kind of at the opening of this uh, committee meeting, like enforcement, uh, we would be dealing with a bifurcated system here, part of the Capitol building under the control of the Senate and the House, and part of it under our jurisdiction. Uh, we could ban them in the common areas, but clearly I don't think the authority would be extended to us to ban in the chambers or the galleries of the respective bodies. Bill, did I see your hand? You did, yeah. I, I uh, want to just respond to Commissioner O'Brien's comments. I, I want to be careful that we're not making comments to try to direct their attorney to, to, to anything. Uh, the, the questions you raise are very important and, and very real, but those are not the core of the issue here. The issue here is do we have the authority? Obviously, the authority in the statute will tell us what we do and don't have. We know we can't. We don't have control over the chambers, et cetera. We know that. I think our question here is just do we have the authority to ban guns in the area that we have over which we have control? I don't want to get him off into all kinds of little rabbit holes into other things. We're not asking him to give us political advice or practical advice. We just want legal advice, I think. And I, I want to be careful. We make comments here that's, that's steering people into a certain direction of something that's off the core issue, just what is the authority and the scope and limit limits and scope of the authority of the Capitol Commission. Well, I apologize. My statement started with I did not wish to direct him into an area. I just hoped that the law might be enlightening. So I apologize that I did not speak accurate or I guess eloquently so that it was clear. I do not wish to direct him at, at any point. I was just hoping that he might stumble across something in the law and he may not. I, I don't know. It's just a concern that I wanted out there much like Commissioner Bauer has been very open with her concerns and thoughts, I felt I should also offer mine. Very good. <clears throat> I think both those clarifications are very important. So what we're talking about here is laying before the special committee the engagement letter uh, by Dyke McGossett and uh, uh, specifically attorney Gary P. Gordon. Uh, what is the pleasure of the special committee with regard to the engagement letter? Mr. Candler. Yeah, I would move that we uh, do sign the engagement letter and retain uh, uh, Gary Gordon uh, through his firm, Dykema. That's And correct. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? 
If there is no further discussion, Madam, yes, Commissioner Bauer. Go ahead. Um, so how are we authorized to pay for an attorney? Do, do we have, we have a budget that we? Yes, yes, we, we, we do have funds. Uh, if you notice the retainer is $5,000, I think we've made it pretty clear that that probably is the maximum amount that we're seeking to spend uh, for this attorney. Um, in your conversations, Bill or John, did the retainer amount and the total amount that we're willing to expend come up? I don't think so, did John. We had it in the letter, so we didn't really discuss it anymore, I don't think. Um, I never discussed it with him. Um, I know he did say he was going to try to save us some money by having some of the research done by an associate, and then he would take all the information that's pulled together and, and work it from there. So he's trying to be very cost conscious uh, because he knows we don't have a big budget. Yes. Mr. Chair, should should we um, make a, a friendly amendment that if the cost is going to be, if the cost exceeds $5,000, that any further action comes back to the commission prior to us incurring any expense over the 5,000. So I guess the, the friendly amendment would be um, limiting it to 5,000 without that is a friendly further amendment. approval. I accept that. You accept that. Would you, <clears throat> rather than, than amend your motion, would you care to just resubmit your motion that includes a limit of $5,000 without further commission approval? What you said. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> we we have a motion in your your second uh, commissioner Trescott still holds. The yes, it does. The secretary will call the roll. Chair Randall. Yes. Vice Chair Trescott. Yes. Ms. Bauer. Uh, no. Mr. Candler. Yes. Ms. O'Brien. Yes. yes. The motion is approved. The engagement letter will be forwarded to the commission with the recommendation of this special committee that the full commission approve the engagement letter. That is the only item that was on the agenda. Have we received any emails from the general public seeking to comment on this? No, we have not. We have not. Seeing no further business to come before the special committee at this time, the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. We have a motion by Commissioner Truscott and support from Commissioner O'Brien that we adjourn. Without objection, a unanimous roll call will be attached to the adjournment. Now, I would ask members to stand by. We'll be joined by our other commissioner, Commissioner Charkoff, in just about five minutes as we convene the full commission. Thank you for your work, and, and Commissioner O'Brien, thank you for your efforts at trying to help us perfect uh, the interface between Zoom and the internet services provided by the House and the Senate. It, uh, well, thank you. I've learned a lot about your systems, our systems, how they work together, and how to have these hybrid meetings. I never thought I'd be an IT specialist. <laughs> well, thank you. And uh, John and Bill, thank you for your work on vetting the various attorneys' names that had been brought to us. With that, this um, special committee stands adjourned. Now, so I would like to call to order uh, this special meeting of the Michigan State Capital Commission and ask the secretary to please call the roll. Chair Randall? Here. Vice Chair Truscott? Here. Ms. Bauer? Here. Ms. Chartkoff? Here. Mr. Candler? Here. Ms. O'Brien. Here. All members of the commission are present. 
I would like to address the general public who might be viewing this commission meeting with the idea that during the public comment portion, they would like to submit comments. If anyone would, would like to do that, they can do so by using this email address, mscc at legislature.mi.gov. Any comments that we receive will be entered into the rec record, and when we get to the public comment portion, we will attempt to read as many of those as time permits. We have one item on the agenda today, and it's to take up the report of the special committee on the authority of the Michigan State Capital Commission to adopt rules that would prohibit firearms um, on Capitol Square. Uh, the special committee has reported to the full commission a recommendation that the engagement letter be approved. That letter would engage the services of Dykema Gossett and specifically uh, attorney Gary P. Gordon. All members of the commission have received copies of that engagement letter and the floor is now open for motions to adopt or comments in general. What's the pleasure of the commission? Uh, Commissioner Bauer. It, my question would be, um, you know, we just had our committee meeting and we you know, bringing forth a recommendation. Is this the appropriate time um, to really restate our comments or have uh, they been duly noted? It, at this time, uh, I would ask that if it's the pleasure of the committee to adopt the recommendation and to approve the engagement letter to place a motion with support on the floor and then uh, I would entertain any comments. So is, is it the pleasure of the commission to adopt the engagement letter? Commissioner Truscott. I'll move to adopt the committee res recommendation. Is there support? I would support it. We have a motion and support under the heading of discussion. The chair recognizes Commissioner Bauer. Thank you. Um, this is gonna sound very familiar to my comments that I made 20 minutes ago um, and that I made on May 11th because my opinion has not changed. And I hope I've made it very clear that I felt then and I feel now that the Michigan Capital Commission has the authority to ensure the safety of the public, the hundreds of thousands of people who visit the Capitol, as well as the staff, legislators who carry on the important business in this building. And we have the authority, I feel, to prohibit firearms within the Capitol building, especially based on our recent legal opinion um, on May 11th, from our attorney general, that the commission does have the authority to restrict firearms. And I do not support um, another legal opinion. I feel that an opinion from the top legal official in the state who was elected by the people of Michigan is an important decision gives us the authority. I, I'm concerned that we're now we're looking for an outside opinion. And why is the advice of an outside opinion better than that of our attorney general? And are we going to continue to seek legal opinions until we get one that the majority of us like? And those are, are my concerns. I feel we have been given the authority. I feel we have the legal authority and that we have the moral responsibility to act. People rightfully get frustrated with government when they perceive that we form committees to put off having to make decisions. We shop around for legal opinions that we can use to rationalize our decisions and that we're afraid to make tough decisions. 
And they also think we don't have any common sense. I can't count the number of people and all political persuasions in the last few weeks who have said to me, I cannot believe that we allow guns in our capital. They, they are outraged, they are shocked, and their response is it makes no sense. So I think that this commission is very uh, able to make a decision um, on whether or not we feel that we should have guns in the Capitol building in the state of Michigan. And I think to, to just continue to get legal opinions, um, I, I, don't, I don't support that. And I think we should save the money for the taxpayers of Michigan. I think we, need, we can make the tough decision on our own. A, do we feel we have the authority? And then if we do, we seek information from state police so that we can come up with the parameters and B, if this body feels we don't have the authority, then the decision, then that decision is made. I happen to feel that we do. So thank you for indulging me in, in listening to me again. Um, again, I support. I do not support uh, this motion. Any other discussion? Yes, Kerry Chartkoff, Commissioner Chartkoff. Her microphone is off. You're you're muted, Carrie. I think there, I'm on you're, now. You're on now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I haven't been part of the special committee, but I'm very much um, knowledgeable. I hope about the issues that have gone into the decision to hire uh, a lawyer to look at this independently, and I don't think that's a bad idea necessarily. And I would be very interested to see what the opinions will be, but we do have a central problem. And that is for the last 30 years, first the Michigan Capital Committee, and now the Michigan Capital Commission, which inherited its duties and legally adopted them when they um, adopted the procedures that had been devised by the first body, that was confusing, um, has had the right and taken it as a right to make decisions about the public areas of the Capitol. It's never been an issue that we have that right over the non-public areas of the Capitol. And to that effect, we have a, a very well circulated and very available public document that's available that says, what are the procedures? And it's entitled the procedures for the use of the public areas of the Michigan State Capitol. And in that document, it states what the public areas are. That includes the grounds and all of the public hallways, stairs, elevators, the rotunda, certain other areas that are public in the building. What I'm concerned about is not only the issue of guns, which I have a strong opinion about, but also what this does to undermine the authority if we are found that we cannot pass restrictions of some kind, what does it do to our authority to actually continue to have the right to enforce procedures for the public areas of the building and grounds? It seems to me it underwrite, would undermine all of them. So that's my major, one of my major concerns. The second issue to me is this issue about guns. To me, we have two issues. One is open carry and one is closed carry. People with closed carry licensed guns. They have, people have been carrying guns into this building for quite a while under that provision. The open carry by people who may be licensed or unlicensed, people who may have a loaded open carry gun or not, we have no way of knowing, people who may be under the influence of alcohol or drugs, people who may have mental issues seems to me that this is just absolutely unacceptable. That's what I'm concerned about the most. So in terms of this issue, this particular issue. So I see two issues here. I will be very interested to see what Mr. Gordon will come up with, with what he thinks, but I hope he understands that the original procedures were adopted before the Capitol's restoration was completed 
and under the advice of the Attorney General at the time, which was Attorney General Kelly. So this is not something new, and it's been vetted a number of times in the intervening years that we do have the, the power to place procedures. Notice I don't say rules. They are not rules. They are procedures. There's a difference. But it does not diminish our authority, not only to create them, but also to enforce them. So that's my opinion, and I hope that it clarified some matters for some. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. <clears throat> I'd like to reiterate that we're not asking the outside attorney what we should do as a commission. We're asking for an opinion on what we can do, what is our authority. Any other commissioners wish to speak on the motion that's before the body? Yes. I do, Chair Randall. Um, I appreciate everyone's comments. I'm in the camp that I'm not confident on our ability, that this is under our authority. So um, our attorney, through her work, Ms. Shaw had said she did not believe we had the authority. The attorney general's office feels differently. I am looking for another party and I appreciate the fact that the attorney is gonna look at this with a very fresh face. Um, in the committee, um, Vice Chair Truscott had mentioned that it's been acknowledged that if we make a change or don't make a change, I guess it could be, that this may be litigated to our highest court. And so I wanna make sure that any decision that's made, we have all of the opinions at our fingertips, even if they're disagreeing opinions, conflicting opinions. I also maintain reservations that the Capitol could be under essentially different standards it's been acknowledged that the Senate and the House retain control of their areas. The executive retains control over their areas. I do have concerns for law enforcement. If there are two different standards which are upheld as laws, does somebody just sprint through the back door to the Senate or House chamber where one law presides versus another? I don't know that the attorney is going to ever resolve that issue because that's not for him to deal with. Um, I have expressed to my leadership within the Senate, that it is my hope that a law could be done, which would clear up any of this confusion and that we wouldn't have to make this decision. Right today, I'm not confident that we have the authority. I'm hoping that this attorney's opinion, whether I personally like it or not, will provide some clarity to me. But again, it, it is my hope that at some point, the legislature and the governor could work together because that's ultimately where the best outcome will happen is if they all decide collectively to take take this into their hands. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Commissioner O'Brien. I think to kind of restate what Commissioner Truscott had said earlier and perhaps choose different words, we could ban firearms. We could attempt to ban firearms. We would see an injunction probably slapped on within 24 hours and then it would make a long, laborious trip through the court system. It's not as simple as we can just ban firearms and it's a fait accompli, it's a done deal. It's, uh, we could move to ban them, but it probably would be temporary, very temporary at best. Uh, and then to move to the comments from Commissioner O'Brien, the rightful place for that decision to be made is with the legislature. I'm not telling them what they should do, heaven knows, but it, uh, it, it clearly, I think, for those of us who are around when the Capitol Commission was created, it was never our intent to get into the firearms banning business. So let's hope that we get an additional bit of clarity as we continue our due diligence, this outside opinion will be melded with our internal attorney's opinion and the attorney general's opinion and that we will be able to make a decision that is not a knee-jerk decision, but is based on a thorough look at the law and what authority this commission truly has. Any other member of the commission have comments? Yes, Commissioner Bauer. Uh, I 
totally agree that the legislature could easily deal with this issue. Um, I've been in the legislature. Uh, Senator O'Brien has been in the legislature. Chairperson Randall. They could deal with the issue by putting parameters, common sense parameters on guns in the Capitol building. I think they should. I wish they would, but they haven't. Even when many legislators and staff have raised serious concerns about their own safety in the building. So I think it's very uh, frustrating and sad that it's left to this body to not only protect this beautiful old building, but now to be in the position you know, that we need to protect the safety of the hundreds of thousands of visitors who come every year and to make sure that our elected officials can make good decisions without being fearful for that they'll be in, that they're intimidated, the, they're fearful of reprisal, and in some cases they're fearful for their lives. They should not have to come to work under these uh, circumstances. So again, I too wish that we were not dealing with this, and but we are, and I, I, we have the more. I feel we have the moral responsibility to to do something, and and I hope that. I don't support the motion, but I, or the, but I do hope that this, that we can make some decision very soon so that we can move on with this. Commissioner Candler. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I'm sorry if anybody sees this as a delay tactic in, in members commission. Frankly, if we're gonna talk a little politically, the votes are not there to pass a, a proposal right now. In fact, we don't have any have one written to, um, in any, any kind of, um, legislative or rulemaking uh, authority, there's always some process. I just see this as part of the process to, to bring all the commission members to some comfortable level. It'd be very easy, just make a motion right now that is very general and have it fail and say, we're done. That to me is just, this is just that's just too simple and that's just walking away. I think we need to take this issue on seriously, uh, you know, implement some process, examine it, and then we'll get down to the point of deciding whether or not we, we we have a, a proposal and how it's written and whether or not we support it. That's a little bit down the road. I think this is just one more step in the process to get us to that point. And that, that's my intention clearly. It's not in any way to delay or try to find a different opinion. I mean, the attorney general's opinion, you know, from all my years of working, my 40 years of working in state government is basically the law of the, of, of the or any uh, state in, entity until it's overturned by the uh, courts or by statute. I understand that, but still, we need to kind of have a grip on all the scope and limits to our authority so all the commission members can feel, feel very comfortable about what their authority is to move forward. Thank you. <clears throat> Seeing no other commissioner who wishes to speak, uh, the question before the body is the approval of the recommendation from the special committee that we enter into the agreement, sign the engagement letter, with Mr. Gary P. Gordon and Dykema Gossett to give us, to render to us another opinion, an opinion that will not bind any commissioner to any particular vote, but will allow us to continue our due diligence. With that, Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Chair Randall? Yes. Chair Truscott? Vice Chair Truscott? Yes. Ms. Bauer? No. Ms. Charkoff? Yes. Mr. Candler? Yes. Ms. O'Brien? Yes. The motion prevails. Uh, we will sign the engagement letter. And I think as uh, Commissioner Candler indicated in his conversations with Mr. Gordon, that we are not looking at a protracted uh, period of time here that he hopefully will be back to us within a couple of weeks. With that in mind, I'm going to suggest that we move the next meeting of the full commission, the June meeting, from the 15th to the 22nd. Uh, would commissioners check their calendar and see if that is doable? Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm out of state that day. I'll be returning. I hope so. 
<laughs> I plan to. You'll be returning when? Uh, on the 22nd, actually, in the evening. Okay. Uh, Joan, did you raise your hand? Well, no, my question is, and, and why are we, would we be delayed? You, I thought they, they could get back to us within two weeks, and isn't that this, about two weeks? This would be, if we move it to the 22nd, it's roughly three weeks. It would give us, if he gets back to us in two weeks, it would give the, the special committee uh, an opportunity to review what the opinion is for Mr. Gordon and make a recommendation to the full commission. And again, I don't mean to convolute it, but it was the will of the commission that we create the special committee. So I feel obligated that we should get that opinion to the special committee. They review it, look at all the ramifications, then make a recommendation to the full commission. Is there objection to that? Okay, if there isn't, well, the 22nd does not work for you, right, John? The rest of the week is fairly open. Um, On the 23rd. Well, well the, the session days are a little bit more problematic for me, um, and I know the same thing with the clerk. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays don't typically work. For me, I could offer the 19th, that Friday, or, you know, so it'd be that same week as what we had thought we were going to have a commission meeting or the 26th. Um, if it's possible, I would favor the 19th more at 11 o'clock. That's just a better day for me practically. I could work to make a session day work, but to be honest with us, um, we're having a lot of challenges with COVID-19. And our world has been rocked substantially. And I suspect that that week is going to be a pretty busy week. And I would probably miss any committee meeting that right. would be held right. on a session day that week. There's little doubt, but those of us that work in the legislature, those last two weeks in June are probably going to be fraught with budget talks and discussions and votes. So um, what about the 19th? It's a Friday. Or the 26th? Yes, Bill. Tonight, I could join by Zoom on the 19th. I'll be uh, out of state then, but I can make that work. Bill. Mr. Or another possibility is to stay with the 15th and just uh, tell our attorney we need to have it plenty of time to review it by that date. Uh, I mean, we could end up getting jammed up. It's possible, but uh, if, it doesn't, if nothing else works, I mean, the 19th would work for me. Me too. The, the 19th is better than the 15th for me, but I could make the 15th work. I have it in there. It's just jammed in in um, between some other appointments. The 19th, I don't have anything on the back side right now. Right. So I can make the 15th work, but I might have to leave a meeting after a certain amount of time because of other responsibilities. Since we had already moved it from our regular time, cool. I, I sandwiched it in between some other things. But I can make either date work. Joan, did you say the 19th would work for you? Yes. yes. So, and John, you could join us, even though you'd be out of state on the 19th. Yes. Yep. Okay. Let's move to the 19th. Morning or afternoon best on a Friday? Morning is better for me. Would, 11 o'clock would be good for me because then it allows, I've got nothing on the back side. As we get later into the day, I have some appointments already on the back side. So I'd prefer something around 11 o'clock if possible. Okay. That works. 11 mm -hmm. o'clock on the 19th. Agreed? Done deal. Uh, Madam Secretary, have we received any public comment via email? We have not. I am not seeing anything. So with that, we've concluded all the items on the agenda today. The chair, thank you, commissioners. This is a challenging issue for us, and I, I appreciate everybody's input and their opinion, and I th think it speaks to the very nature of the composition of this commission.
that we respect each other's opinions. Uh, <clears throat> we're not all walking in lockstep, but we're ultimately going to come up with a good public policy, get it behind us, and then we can get back to the business that we all thought <laughs> was the business of the commission, and that's taking care of this historical building. So with that, the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion by Commissioner O'Brien, support by Commissioner Truscott. Any, there's no discussion on this motion, so it's a straight vote. All in favor say aye. Those aye. opposed aye. nay. The House, the House. <laughs> I think I oh, we're going to start that. You got promoted. My old Big promotion. There. Memories. <laughs> the, the, the Capital Commission is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.